Inverse ETFs are designed to increase in value when the indexes they track fall in value. And with the ongoing sell-off in stock prices, inverse ETFs have been top performers. Today's audience requested contest is a triple header between inverse and short ETFs from advisor shares, total capital, and pro shares. So who wins the battle? Find out right after this. You're watching ETF Battles. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Glad to have you with us. Keep your ETF battle requests coming. Hit us up in your YouTube comment section with your ticker symbols or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. And don't forget to punch the subscribe button along with the like button if you've been enjoying the show. Be sure to also check out the description section below with uh, links to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Plus, join the waiting list for our new margin of safety investing tool. It's gonna to change the way that you think about risk and investing, so hit the link below in the description section. Now today's ETF battle was requested by a viewer named Innovative V. It's between HDGE from Advisor Shares, Sark from Tuttle Capital, and then SH from ProShares. By the way, congratulations, Innovate V. You get your choice of an ETF battles coffee mug or a shirt. So hit the description section below for the details. Judging today's matchup is David Durking with TheStreet.com and Dave Krinsis with ETF Portfolio Management. Judges, great to see you. Welcome back. Hey, Ron, David, nice to see you. Let's battle. Hey, Ron, thanks for having me back. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then we got our mystery category. That's where you, our judges, can pick that single factor or multiple factors that you feel are important to today's showdown. Um, I've got the scorekeeping chores. Keep in mind that our judges can also do split decisions. They can nominate wild cards. And none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or any of our judges. So let's begin with the first category, which is cost. Let's start with Dave Krinsis. How do you see it between these three ETFs? So on cost, these are really special purpose ETFs for different types of portfolio protection. And the type of protection needed for a specific situation is far more important than the cost. That said, SARC is the lowest absolute cost of the three, so the win on cost goes to SARC. Thank you, Dave. We shift next to David, David Durking with TheStreet.com. How do you see it when it comes to cost? Yeah, I agree. Uh, SARC is the cheapest of the bunch at 75 basis points. SH isn't much higher at 90 basis points. And Hedge, uh, is, you know, we'll discuss in a second that strategy, but it's got a sky-high expense ratio, so we can throw that out. Uh, right off the bat. Uh, on trading costs, SARC and SH are both pretty similar, so I think we can defer just to the expense ratio. SARC is the winner. Very good. Thank you, David. I got you down for SARC. Next up is exposure strategy. David, you're still up. Give us your analysis. Yeah, SH is just a uh, pure short S&P 500 uh, ETF, so nothing complicated or unusual there. SARC is the short ARK-K ETF, so that's going to short Kathy Wood's funds. Hedge is a little bit unusual in that it's uh, a short active equity fund. It's actually targeting some of the lower quality stocks, so those that have uh, high debt loads or low cash flows, low profits. So it's taking a, li a little more of an uh, active targeted approach. Um, for Hedge, I kind of like this one better than the others because it takes that little more a specific approach, it'll short stocks or themes. Uh, it's top holding right now is uh, the IJR, the small cap ETF. It's got an 8% weighting, so it's shorting small caps entirely. And it's got some uh, individual holdings like Deutsche Bank and Hunt Transport and CarMax. So it's actually doing a pretty good job of targeting some of those lower quality funds. I really don't have a problem with the exposure strategies of any of these funds as long as you uh, you know what you're getting. But I'm going to give the narrow win to Hedge here just because I like that more specific approach of shorting the lower quality stocks as opposed to a broad index or theme. All right. Thank you very much, David. We shift next to Dave Princess. How do you see it in terms of exposure strategy? Well, for exposure, 
as David mentioned, Hedge gives you an active fundamental shorting process. SARC is short the holdings of the active and concentrated ARK K innovation ETF. And SH gives you one time short the S&P 500. Now, keep in mind, these tools are typically used by expert investors for a specific situation or time frame. And among these three funds, SARC is likely to deliver the most protection in a severe broad market crash. So I give the strategy win to SARC. That takes us next to performance. And this is where it really gets interesting. David, you're up. Give us your analysis on performance. Which of these three ETFs stands out? Performance is always the bottom line. And this data shows that year to date through June 14th, 2022, the NASDAQ 100 fell 31%. RK lost almost double down 61%, and SARC delivered great protection with a gain of 92%. However, just as we showed in prior ETF battles, when we preferred TQQQ over RK in the bull market, we show here that we prefer SQQQ over SARC in the bear market. That said, our limited risk appetite has forced us into cash, sometimes even 100% cash, along with cautious exposure to energy and gold. Wildcard ERX is two times energy, and through June 14th, this ETF gained 121%, outperforming both SQQQ and SARC. So I give the alternative protection security win to Wildcard's ERX and SQQQ, and in their absence, I give the performance win here to SARC. All right, thank you very much, Dave. Now we shift to David. How do you see it when it comes to performance? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Sark has only been around for less than a year. So if it if there was an award for debuting at just the right time, this fund probably would win because it debuted right around the time that the RK ETF was uh, near its peak and it got in or it debuted right before uh, RK dropped nearly 70%. So that's resulted in a gain of about... 120% or so since inception, which is obviously fantastic. It hasn't been around since uh, ARK really took off a few years ago, so we can assume probably the opposite performance would have been the case had it been around. It hasn't, of course. So uh, Hedge and SH have been around for much longer. Hedge has actually underperformed SH uh, over the last 10 years or so. So even though it's got that active strategy. It hasn't really paid off over the long term. But if we look just at shorter term performance, when all three of fun, uh, all three funds have been around competing against each other, Sark is the clear winner here with a huge gain over Hedge and SH. That takes us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick that single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So David, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yeah, my mystery battle category is uh, we're going to take a look at the long-term risk profiles of these funds because over time, with stocks going up much more often than they go down, my personal stance is that you don't want to get too aggressive in shorting because it's such a small opportunity set to outperform. Uh, Sark obviously is going to have a lot of volatility because you know we've seen with Kathy Wood's funds. Uh, their volatility is through the roof, especially in environments like this. Hedge, because of the active strategy, actually is a little more risky than just the straight inverse S&P 500 by about 20 or 30 percent or so. So I full disclosure, I'm not into shorting. So personally, I wouldn't hold any of these funds. But I think if you're going to go short the market, I think you probably want to stay a little on the more conservative end. So instead of going with the a uh, little more aggressive active strategy or the ultra aggressive anti arc K strategy. Uh, I would go with SH in the mystery category of long-term risk pro profile based on uh, being a little more diverse and in my opinion, a little more appropriate for shorting. That's a solid take. Thank you, David. Dave Krinsis is up next. How do you see it in terms of your mystery battle category? What is it and who wins it? Well, everyone knows my mystery category is position weighting because it can make all the difference. And at ETFPM, our active strategies could allocate up to 9% exposure in Hedge or SARC and up to 30% exposure in SH. So I call the position weighting category a win for SH. 
Now we shift to the part of the program where our judges can pick their overall winner. So Dave Krinsis, give it to us. Ron, to recap this alternative protection battle, we believe investors should be very cautious this summer. Principal protection always comes first. And we remain concerned about broad market de-risking, which may continue. This means we still favor cash exposure for protection and super cautious allocations to energy and gold. So I give this alternative protection battle win to wildcards ERX and SQQQ. And in their absence, I give the win to Sark. And I would also like to say a quick congratulations to Matt Tuttle and the team at Tuttle Capital Management. As David, my co-judge, was mentioning, Tuttle launched this short ETF version of ARK-K just two weeks before the NASDAQ 100 peaked in November 2021. And this SARC ETF is actually a very important tool for people that own ARK in a taxable account. In fact, the SARC ETF recently had roughly $600 million in assets, reflecting strong market demand for this dynamic hedging tool. Yeah, that's a pretty uncommon in terms of getting that timing just right, but clearly they nailed it. So that's uh, certainly kudos to them and the team. Um, David, your final opportunity to give us your overall winner. Yeah, I'll piggyback on uh, what my fellow Dave said about Sark. Uh, y- you know, I know when this fund came out, it it got a little bit a little bit of attention for, you know, maybe they were taking sort of a a shot at Kathy Wood or Ark or something like that. But I think a product like this is really important that it's available to investors because if you want to short a theme like this, if you want to do it yourself, it's going to be really costly and it's going to be really time consuming. But when you have it in a simple ETF structure that charges 75 basis points, it's a it's a great get for investors if that's the, uh, if that's the way they want to go with their uh, short strategy. But with that being said, I think if you're going to look at any one of these funds, I mean, they're obviously used for uh, pure shorting and uh, market timing. So it's, in my opinion, it's basically which one is most appropriate for shorting. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier with the long-term risk profile. I would prefer SH over SARC and Hedge just because I think uh, if you're going to short the market, I think it's probably better to do uh, just a broad index approach. Uh, If you hit SARC or hedge right at the the right time, uh, as we've seen with SARC, I mean, your returns can be through the roof, but in a reverse scenario, you can experience some pretty deep losses too. So uh, I'll stick with SH as the winner here just for uh, straightforward and simple coverage. Well, our judges have spoken, and according to my battle scorecard, this is a split decision between SARC and SH. But man, it was close. I thought Sark was actually going to win this battle. Want to mention also a couple of wild cards from our judge, Dave Princess, ERX, which aims for leverage exposure to energy stocks, and then SQQQ, which aims for um, inverse um, leverage exposure to the triple Qs. And a lot of really good points brought out by our judges. A couple of key takeaways, inverse ETFs, if you use them, should be actively monitored. They are not buy and forget investments. Also, negative 1x inverse ETFs use no leverage, whereas negative 2x and negative 3x use 200%, 300% daily leverage with the goal of amplifying performance. So you got different iterations, and really it boils down to your level of aggressive aggressiveness. Uh, obviously, the more leverage you're using, the more aggressive you are. Conversely, um, less or, or no leverage is um, less aggressive. So just keep those points in mind. Again, Dave and David, great analysis. This is a, this has been, been a timely battle matchup, and keep up the good work. Thank you, Ron. Good to talk to you. Thanks, guys. Great to be with you. Be sure to visit the description section below for research links to our judges. While you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. You'll also see viewer resources with online classes and financial tools like our margin of safety tool. Be sure to join us for the waiting list that's there. So which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode? Post your ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section or hit us up on Twitter at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of a ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. 
I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.